Welcome to Real Filmmaking. My name is Corey, and today I want to share with you about a very special camera and why you should consider picking up the Canon EOS M in 2021. So story time real quick. I've been doing video production for the better part of four going on five years, and I've shot tons of different things, but my favorite thing to shoot is narrative films. Like, I love short films, I love storytelling, and that's really what got me into doing video stuff. I love a good story. And as I've grown as a filmmaker and doing more things, I've always wanted to continue to grow more as like a cinematographer and as a filmmaker, like really understanding different things about like what makes a movie really feel like a movie, like, you know, that immersive experience. And so when it comes to the technical side of that, like related to cameras, like when you start looking at, you know, cinema cameras that will give you an image and will give you tools and give you all the different things that are like just a taste of the cinema world, you're looking at some pretty expensive stuff. And even uh, for the budget filmmaker, you know, you can't always drop like two grand or even a grand on cameras like that. And so for me, as I've wanted to get into that, like I was doing lots of research, I'm like, I kept seeing these two different names come up, the Canon EOS M and Magic Lantern. Now the Canon EOS M is a Canon mirrorless camera that actually came out in 2012. It was Canon's first attempt at a mirrorless camera. And you know, by looking at the specs on paper, it's nothing special. Uh, it's 18 megapixels. Uh, it doesn't have great autofocus. This was before Canon's dual pixel autofocus. I think it can only record in 1080 at 30 frames per second. So no slow motion stuff. And it was just kind of like an average camera. But the other side of the equation that I kept hearing about was Magic Lantern. And Magic Lantern is this third party aftermarket software that people can work on and create different builds. And you can load this software onto the EOS M. And Magic Lantern allows your camera to do a ton of different things that it was never created to do. But for filmmaking, that is incredible. You get access to different things like, you know, waveform, and vector scopes and false color and all these different things. But the most important aspect about Magic Lantern is it allows the EOS M to record raw video. And so a quick little disclaimer about raw video. So when you shoot in raw, basically all the information that comes into your sensor is untouched essentially. Your camera is not making these decisions about any of these different aspects like contrast or tint or things like that. And so you have so much more flexibility in post-production to push colors around and to achieve different looks. And that is very similar to what you see in films when they're stylized looks or when you're trying to go for a certain look to fill a scene or a particular mood. That's how they're doing them. They're shooting with cameras that can shoot raw and then they can do so much stuff in post-production. When you're not shooting raw, your camera is making some decisions about the image that it's taking in through the sensor. When you set picture profiles or different things, your camera is saying like, you know, boost the contrast here, lessen the contrast, you know, kind of shift the tint this way. Do the, it's making these small decisions and so essentially the file you pull from your camera like the M50 has some baked in components that when you try to push those things around in post, the image starts to break up and degrade. You can only push it so far. You can still get good looking images, but you don't have the ultimate flexibility that you would have if you shoot in raw. And so finding these different pieces of information in my research, you know, led me to go look at different images and videos people have taken with the EOS M and Magic Lantern. And I just honestly was floored. Like it was incredible some of the results people were getting with this camera. And you know, I've had footage going throughout this video that you've seen. And like, I think the results are honestly like, it is crazy <laughs> for the amount that you pay for this camera, you know, like as of me recording this video, like, you know, you can pick up one anywhere from like 150 to maybe like 400 on the high side, but to pay that amount for this camera and to get Magic Lantern and to be able to get images that look this good, it's just incredible. Another thing that I will say is really great about the EOS M and Magic Lantern particularly is the community that has really banded together <laughs> around this camera. Uh, a lot of indie filmmakers, people who want to get into cinematography, learn different things, have really like taken up arms to support this camera. You know, uh, there's a Facebook group, like I'll put a link down in the comments that, you know, if you have an EOS M, you can get into and learn a lot about how people do different things for their post-production or what lenses are adapting to their EOS M or all these different tips and tricks. And then even on the YouTube world, there's people like Zeke. I've learned so much from Zeke about the Canon EOS M. I feel like he's kind of one of the, the godfathers of 
this camera and there's other people like JK Flash who shot some incredible stuff with it. And you know, Colin over at IMCE who has great things about rig building and just different aspects about the M. And the community is so great. Like it's people who are supporting each other, who are filmmakers, who want to grow. It's actually one of the places on social media that like I enjoyed looking through the comments and seeing people like, oh, I tried this, or hey, why don't you try this? Or like people constantly encouraging each other to improve and to get better in like a really positive way. And that's great. So wrapping this video up, I know I've kind of been all over the place, but who do I think this camera is for? I think this camera is for someone who wants to get more into cinematography and for filmmaking. And what I mean specifically by that, cause you know, sometimes people use those words interchangeably, but I mean cinematography and filmmaking as in it's somebody who wants to get exposed to the different tools that are used in cinema cameras. So things like waveforms or false colors or vector scopes or zebras, things that you don't necessarily have on your standard Canon mirrorless camera, or your Sony or your Panasonic. Sometimes you do, but generally you don't. If you want things like that, the EOS M combined with Magic Lantern is a great opportunity to get exposed to some of those things. So if further down the road, you're able to get a cinema camera, you know how to use those things. Along with exposing somebody at budget level to some of these cinema level tools, it allows people at a budget level to be exposed to cinema level files. This camera, like I said, can shoot raw video anywhere from 10 to 14 bit depth, which is like the colors and the information it can take in. And so that combined with different software, you can learn a lot about color grading. You know, that's been one of the biggest things for me. It's like, because I have these awesome, like color rich files that I can push around and do all these different things, I've learned so much about how to do stuff with this camera regards to color grading and getting different looks and I'm still learning. It's like a whole new world has opened up in my filmmaking and I love it. And so for someone who can't drop like $1,500 on a cinema level camera or two grand, it's like they can pick up the EOS M, like I said, for like $300 and use some of their old lenses and get almost like cinema level quality images that they can learn on. I think the last thing, you know, related to this camera is the image quality. I don't think for the price, like I've said earlier in this video, you can beat the image quality of this camera for the price that you pay for it. And I think there's just a richness that you get with the images out of the EOS M. You know, they just, there's more detail you know, there's more color information, but there's more detail in how things look. They look more true to life. You know, whether you want to say it looks more cinematic, I know that is a controversial word here in the filmmaking YouTube world. So regardless of what you want to call it, I don't think you can deny that the M has this special quality to its footage. And when people look at the image, they see an image that looks like far more expensive than the price of entry for this camera. Again, if you're somebody who really wants to get into cinematography, to learn more about filmmaking, color grading, get some exposure to these different cinema level like tools, I would highly recommend picking up the Canon EOS M in 2021. This is a camera that I can totally see holding on to for a long time. It's small, it's compact. I love the different lens options that you can have with different adapters. And to be able to carry around like a camera that can get cinema grade images out of it, like, and it can literally fit into my pocket or in my backpack. It's hard for me to contest, like not wanting to hold on to this camera. I've used the M on a couple like side projects, like as a B cam, but I fully intend in the next couple months to shoot a short film with this as my main camera. And hopefully I can share that with you all here on the channel, maybe get some behind the scenes. But yeah, this is a camera that I'm gonna be holding on to for a long time. <laughs> Thanks so much everyone for tuning in. If you found this video helpful or you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to Real Filmmaking for more content coming about filmmaking, creative process, camera gear on a weekly basis and until next time keep making movies and watching movies and i'll see you on real filmmaking